everyone. Welcome to God, Sex, and Love. It's your girl, Miracle Sims. Tonight, we're going to be chatting with Miss Julie Sanford of Married to Addiction. So if you are ready for this conversation, then stay tuned. Welcome back to God, Sex, and Love. I am here with Miss Julie Sanford. Welcome to God, Sex, and Love. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it very much. Yes, yes. I'm excited to learn more about you and your movement and everything that you have going on. So can you just uh, share with the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm Julie, as you said, and I'm a wife, a mom of three. I have two grown daughters and one little boy. My daughters are 30. 24, 31, 24, and then my son is nine. So I have a really big gap there, but it keeps life interesting, right? Um, yeah. As it relates to what we're talking about today, I am also the wife of an alcoholic. And um, mm -hmm. it was a very difficult path, as we're going to talk about a little bit, but I'm also here to just kind of share a message of hope because my mm -hmm. husband and I were brought through this and back into complete restoration in our lives and in our marriage, where we'll be celebrating our 13th wedding anniversary this fall. So it kind of uh, was a little rocky for a while, but um, like I said, I'm just kind of here to spread hope to anybody that might be dealing with this or know somebody who's dealing with this right now in their life. That is amazing. Actually, as I was looking at your site and everything like that, I just was like, you know, this is, it just, to me, it shows the power of God, like how God can bring somebody through something and then now see how you're blessing so many other people. And, you know, a lot of times we go through things and it's like, man, why are we going through this? And why is it like this? But then when you see what you do down the line, it's like, oh, I went through that for this. And so um, I commend you. I commend you for, uh, you know, everything you're doing. It sounds awesome. I'm excited to hear more about it. And um, yeah, but, but before I get into that, let me, let me just, just, I guess the elephant in the room is all those high numbers you just gave. I'm over here like, ma'am, you look 30 yourself. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm not, I promise. It's the it's the ring light, it's the makeup, you know. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'm like, what? <laughs> You're my new best okay. friend. It's <laughs> awesome. So, yes, yes, yes. I don't want to get the name of your movement wrong, so please inform us the exact name. And to go back to what you said a second ago, I was not always a really willing participant in coming out into the public with my story. Um, like you said, though, God kind of decides how he wants to use us. And I was very hesitant about it. It's not a fun topic, right? It's not like super cheery and happy. Right. Um, but like you said, it absolutely, mm -hmm. that was why it happened. And for me to just decide that I'm not going to now use that for the good of helping other people is incredibly selfish and not being obedient so yeah it's it's, it's been an interesting path to get here but i'm glad i finally woke up to the realization that this is where i'm supposed to be oh and I, I love that man and um yeah i understand that it may not be pretty you know um but sometimes life isn't um but again the more i study the word and things like that i'm seeing that you know at the end of the day uh the word also reminds us that you know although we go through things gotta be right there to carry us through and so um it sounds like that this is you know your story as well um and i was just gonna say too that you know a lot of times in marriages so again i commend you again <laughs> um that people you know tend to just check out right if things aren't going the way that they had hoped or dreamed or wanted or whatever the case is they're like oh you're not fulfilling whatever it is and then they just give up on the person so um you know i don't know how long into your marriage things were would you, would you like to share that thought yeah sure um we've been married for a few years actually and you know we had always been social drinkers i mean nothing out of the norm um but it things kind of really changed after my husband lost his dad 
And after that, the drinking kind of went from, you know, like what I would consider in the normal range to being a little bit concerning to like really just affecting our lives on a major level to where he couldn't work and, you know, just really like monumentally impacting our lives. So uh, it, right. we'd been married for a while after, you know, before all of this kind of reared its ugly head. So we had a lot of history already, <clears throat> excuse me, but like you said, you know, it, it, it's hard to stay and to hang in there through all of that. And that's what I tell people now. I, if it wasn't for my faith and if it wasn't just for really knowing super deep down, like my head didn't really know it and I don't feel like my heart didn't really know it, but somewhere in my soul, I knew that it was going to be okay eventually. Now, there were days mm -hmm. when I still got mad at God, when I still got mad at the situation, when I was resentful and confused and I didn't understand. You know, I had been saved since I was a little kid and I'm, I'm thinking, why why me? Like, why, are, why is my family being subjected to this? And, and it was really bad for a couple of years. And that, you know, is a really long time to be living in such a dark, having such a dark cloud over your household and your marriage and your life and everything else. So... I, I definitely, my, my faith was tested big time. And so that's another thing that I really want to let women know is if you're feeling that way, it's normal. I mean, you're going through some really heavy stuff and you probably will feel like God is abandoning you at some point through this walk because it's, it's incredibly hard. But I want them to know that even when you're not seeing it, when you're in that moment, when you get on the other side, and my husband's been sober for four, year now, four years now, so I'm quite a bit on the other side, thank God. But when you get on the other side, you look back and you see, okay, he was his his hand was in that, his hand was in that. Even when you don't, you didn't know it at the time, and you really felt just abandoned. He is absolutely there. So that's another big part of my message, just to let women know, like he has not left you. I promise, and you will you'll see. You know, it, it'll all like make sense eventually. But that's it's definitely a struggle when you're in the thick of it, for sure. Yes, ma'am. I, I totally understand. And, and that's with a lot of different things, too, though. Like, not just the marriage. Like, even as individuals, you can kind of go through that same type of thing and then feel like we're alone and, and everything. So, again, it's a beautiful thing to come out on the other side, I'm sure, um, and everything like that. I kind of, even though I know he's not here to, you know, I guess defend himself or whatever the case is, but, I mean, I wonder, like, you know, what it was like for him in regards to or your husband um, you know, cause I, I well, I, I was going to say I haven't lost him. Then I mean, technically I have. I know this, that sounds weird <laughs> to just set it up, but long story short, my situation is that my father passed before I was born. So the thing is, I don't, you know, I didn't get a chance to know him. Um, and so I have my stepfather and I have my mom, you know, and everything like that. So I haven't lost either of them by the grace of God. And um, so I don't know the feeling. So I'm sure that was a heavy situation to go through. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of times, at least I noticed with my husband, he'll kind of, every now and then he'll open up and a lot of times he'll keep things in. And, and so I, do you think it was like that? Like, did he kind of just keep it in or try to keep it away from you or, you know, not communicating whatever it was? That he so we actually needed. found out through this journey when he finally did go to recovery, he went to a dual diagnosis center, which means that they, and it was a, a Christian like faith-based center, which was huge. Um, mm -hmm. But they, they work with the addiction part of it and the recovery around that, but they also work with any mental illness issues that are going on. And we found out that he actually has bipolar disorder, which mm -hmm. he had always told me like there was something else. And that was another reason why I just kind of kept hanging in there because he, you know, he was, he was pretty open with me through this whole journey. And he was just saying, you know, the, the drinking is because there's something else. Like he, he would describe it as self-medicating. He's like, I just don't feel right. Like something's not right with me. And he said, it's not, you know, the drinking isn't necessarily the issue. It's the symptom of whatever the real root cause is, which ended up being bipolar disorder. And we had no idea, like he didn't have any of what I would consider like the obvious signs. But looking back, mm -hmm. once we knew, you know, he has um, bipolar two, which is a little bit less of like the really big swings. Looking mm -hmm. back, we saw different patterns and things that we thought, oh, okay, now, you know, now that makes sense. But he really, the bigger issue was that he was dealing with that underlying problem that we didn't know was going on. So once he was treated for that and treated for the addiction, that made all the difference in the world. So being along that walk with him as we were kind of uncovering those things, 
made it easier as we went along because now we know what we're dealing with, right? And now we can address what what really was happening. So I was really grateful that he was really open with me and, you know, kind of let me know what it was like for him because it's hard to know when you haven't been in that position yourself. Right, right. And then again, commending him too to that he even saw the benefit and need to go ahead and get help because a lot of times people deny it. They don't even you know, want to admit that they need to go ahead and get the help. And so, um, and that you all found a faith place place too, because, you know, a lot of time, you know, that can be rare. Uh, and then you're getting people that are kind of medicating you in a way that maybe won't be beneficial down the line. So um, it seems that perhaps did they um, get a chance to kind of work on some spirit things as well then with they them did. being a face place yeah, absolutely. And that, and I think that really is important for recovery, you know, for, for pretty much anyone, because it is kind of like a body, mind and spirit thing, you know, like in his case, yes, it's super hugely important to partner with the Lord and get his help with this, but you've also got bipolar disorder that needs to be addressed, you know, and you've also mm -hmm. got addiction that now you're deep in and your body is affected and it affects your mind. Like it, it changes the chemical, uh, there's chemical imbalance in your brain and alcoholics. So like there's all these mm -hmm. layers of it and you really have to kind of address all of that together holistically to really have long-term success, I feel. And I think that's why he really has had the long-term success because he found out what he was dealing with mentally. You know, they addressed what was going on with his physical body. And then yes, having the spiritual layer and element to it as well is really like the thing that's the lasting part of it. That's kind of like your, your ultimate connection and you always have that to fall back on. So I think the fact that they addressed every layer of it and every part of it was huge. That's awesome. And so did they kind of help you as well as the spouse or was it something that you kind of had to just have your own journey uh, like aside from him or was it kind so of like a thing I, that you guys did together? Yeah, we did actually. I had I had kind of tried to figure things out on my own for a really long time, did a terrible, terrible job. <laughs> But you don't know what you don't know at that at that point. You know, you're so desperate and you're just grasping at straws and you're doing what you think is the right thing, which a lot of times the true right thing is counterproductive to how it how it feels in, in this scenario. But um, they did also invite the families to what they called family week at the treatment center. So the facility was about four hours away from my house. So we I actually went and stayed in the hotel and went uh, Monday through Friday that week to a lot of the classes that they were uh, teaching you know the people who were there and got uh, interest or a lot of information on the types of things that they were learning and the types of things that were going on with him you know physiologically and all the other uh, areas too so they did bring us in for that which I really really thought was beneficial and that's now I've taken that away from there and I can pass on the things that I learned too because you do have to understand that you're dealing with the person as a whole person you know you do have to give them the benefit of the doubt with some stuff and I didn't really realize how much he was going through and what it was like for him until I went and heard some of the things that they had been telling the patients and there was massive amount of light bulb moments you know so that was a really big help as well for sure that's awesome man oh my god I'm so happy for you all. Like, I know that you all, you know, were able to kind of, uh, it seems as if like face it head on. Like, how long did it take between, you know, I guess realizing that, okay, there's a deep issue there and then actually going to get the help? Like, was it a long time or was it kind of like, we're gonna go ahead and face this head on. Like, let's find a place. Like, what was that process like? So it was a period of about two and a half years or so where the addiction was bad and affecting our lives for sure. I was in a corporate management position at the time and I ended up like, I mean, I was trying to manage things at the office. I was trying to manage things at home. I was trying to do what I could to like fix the situation with him. I was trying to be a mom and I realized that I realized now that I was taking on just way too much. At the time I ended up covered in hives like mm. physical hives, like multiple times a day. And I didn't know why it was so weird. Like I'd be at the office and I would just get like these huge patches of hives. And I'm thinking, have I changed my laundry detergent? Like, am I allergic to my clothes now? Like what's going on? Not realizing that they were stress induced. Like my body was under such a massive amount of stress 24 seven that it was like spilling out into a physical way. And as soon as he got help, of course, 
one way because the, the stress was removed. But it was a period of about two years of when it was really bad. And then once he went to the treatment center, you know, got the diagnosis of bipolar, got treated, uh, that was about six to eight weeks was his inpatient. And then he went to outpatient for a while after that. But so far, I mean, everything's been great. I mean, this is a lifelong thing. You know, an alcoholic is always an alcoholic. So we, we understand that there's always a threat of relapse, but now he has, tools that he didn't have before he has you know like i said the relationship with god that he didn't really have before at least not as it relates to something like this mm -hmm. so even though you know for a while i was really kind of stuck in that oh my gosh but what if you know what if what if he goes back out they call it you know what if he what if he starts thinking again what if and, and then i started thinking you know that doesn't come from god that fear mm -hmm. and that constant worry and having that hanging over my head that is not from god that is the enemy trying to be like hey yeah you might have victory now but it's not going to last you know, mm -hmm. and so I really just kind of like had to kick that to the curb and say, I'm not staying in that place. Like I have victory right now. He has victory right now. And that's where we're at. All the rest of it is, is non-existent right now. So it's not even worth worrying about. So yeah. that's kind of, that was a big, a big lesson for sure. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it just probably got in the middle of that. Like that, and like, amen. Like, yeah, we have to get to that place to, yeah. that, you know, we shut the devil up and right. send him back to where he comes from. Cause you know, at the end of the day, you know, that type of thinking is a distraction. And, and, and it, like you said, it's that fear is that, you know, you know, he's gonna try to use every little thing to come against you and, you know, oh, get yeah. you working and not focus on, you know, God and his power and, you know, and what he's doing. Like you said, you've seen, you know, results and you see that right now things are good. Like, so we're, that's what we're gonna focus on, what God is doing right now and not worry about, like you say, the non-existent, you know, future or whatever yeah. the case is. So, exactly. um, man, <laughs> this is, even just this right here, like, I mean, I, I really hope that people are like, you know, letting this marinate today. Cause I feel like that, that is just very helpful. Just even just hearing about the process right there. Yeah. So, um, goodness, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, I don't know where I want to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, I get like this sometimes. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, man. I like I said, I'm just it. So, so I don't know. There's just so many things running through my mind right now. It's like you know, kind of wanted to talk about organization, but at the same time, talking about you all's process and and everything like that. So, well, one question I did have before I guess we get into you know what you decided to do, um, you know, after you all came out of the situation, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, like when you found the, like, how did you find the organization that you walked into? Like, was it somewhere that was in your your town and you already knew about it or you had to like Google? Like, how did you all find the place that, that helped? It was, it was totally a God ordained thing. A friend of mine had known somebody, like a friend of a friend kind of situation who had been in that facility relatively recently, like within the, the last year. And um, I was just talking to her about what was going on and, you know, saying that he was indicating that he was ready to get some help. And she told me, she said, you've got to send him here. Like, they're miracle workers. Like, it's, it's they're called La Hacienda, to just give them a little bit of a plug. They're in Hunt, Texas, a tiny little town in Texas. And it was mm -hmm. about four hours away from us. So I don't know that I necessarily would have, would have found it because I had started looking a little bit, but just places locally. But they... Um, they just they do it right man they've saved so many lives and she just it just like you know popped into her head and she's like this is where he's got to go you know and she just made it sound like you know this is the only option you know <laughs> so i looked into it a little bit online and i you know i absolutely trust her judgment she's a christian friend of mine and she she's just a beautiful person so i thought you know what i feel like that's a sign and that's that was a little heavenly download as i call it and for her to pass on to me and and we just moved forward and it was just the best idea ever man that's like that's beautiful as well because that actually reminded me of something else i wanted to ask you or or say something about that you said is your surroundings so like you had that godly christian friend to be able to give you that advice that you needed um and then even when it comes to um you know him and, and you it's like you were affected you know even physically by the things that are going that were going on with him you know uh in regards to the hives and things like that i think you know it's just those relationships are just so important when we when we really think about it at the end of the day like you know 
your husband and you know your wife i mean you are you are one you know and so he's going through things and those things kind of you know affect you too and i think sometimes people forget about that when it comes to certain things yeah. um you know now obviously i mean his situation is you know i guess he was coping with whatever you know the things that were going on um but then i guess even when it comes to uh I mean, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is like infidelity or something like that. Like people don't think about their spouse, right? They don't think about, well, how is this going to affect the person that I married, you know? And um, so I don't know. I mean, it's just one of those things. And like, so I guess, yeah, surrounding yourself with the right flock <laughs> is what I'm hearing it, it was a good move for you as well as, um, you know, I guess at some point, well, you said he acknowledged that he, he wanted to go ahead and start getting help. So yeah. that was his trip. I mean, and that's the thing too, like, when I think about other people, like I know sometimes I try to go out of my way to like help people and, you know, I, I like try to root them on or whatever the case is. But at the end of the day, it has to be their choice. It has to be their decision to, to make whatever necessary changes. So so for you, like how hard was that for you? Like, was it, was it like you were, you were over here just waiting for him to acknowledge it and, and get the help or were you, like how, how how was it for you handling that? So it's funny because they they always say that there's really that there's nothing you can do, and that is true when it comes to having them decide whether or not they're going to get help for sure. So mm -hmm. they they have to be at that place because if you if you like threaten them into recover to treatment, or if you nag them into treatment, or if you you know put your foot down and give them an ultimatum, and they go for those reasons. The likelihood that they're going to be successful is not anywhere near as high as it is when they decide they're ready because, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that I've had that experience in my own life, too, with other things that, you know, far less important. But like when you when you set your mind to something and you know that that is what you want, there's momentum behind that, you know, mm -hmm. and that can carry you way farther than if somebody just says you need to do ABC. Like once you have it in your head it's a whole different process you know and i think that it's no different for recovery like when they get to that place then they're ready and i really think that's when the success comes but on my side of things i tried to make him ready and i tried to fix it and i tried to do all of those things and i'm really grateful that god basically didn't didn't have it go my way because like mm -hmm. I said, then he probably wouldn't have been sober for four years. You know, he was so, he's sober still because he did this on his own. So what I try to teach women now is, you know, like I said a little bit earlier, it feels counterproductive to not try to fix it. But mm -hmm. I felt like God really showed up in my situation when I came to the end of myself and when I got out of his way. Yes. yes. Because my husband can't hear him if he's too busy hearing me in his ear all the time. You know what? <laughs> that's that's not gonna work. So he, if I'm being louder than God, then he can't work, you know? And so I really kind of felt like at the end of it all, when he did decide, you know, that he was ready to go to treatment and when everything went in that direction, it was because I literally remember a day standing in the shower and the water was just as hot as I could stand it because I was angry and mad and just so frustrated and so just had nothing left, I had nothing left. I had no more ideas. I didn't know what else to try. Our family was falling apart. My husband had tried to take his life twice at this point, you know, through all of this. And I just thought he was going to die. We were going to, you know, our marriage, my kids are going to be without their dad. My marriage is, you know, going to be over. And I just remember screaming at God, like, I, and it wasn't like the the pretty calling out to God that you hear in the Bible. It was screaming at God, like, you need to show up yesterday. <laughs> you know, it was, it was almost, I was at the point where I was like, prove, prove you're real. You know, you need to show up. You need to, to move into this situation. And I think that he was just waiting for me to come to that point where I was at the end of myself. You know, he was kind of like, well, if you're done now, I'd like to I'd like to get involved here you know what I mean and I was mm -hmm. I was just so in the way and so I I just I think that that's an important message for anybody who's who's going through this to hear because this your husband's recovery is not your responsibility that's between him and, and it's real hard to stay in that mind frame when it is affecting you on a daily basis but it's not you're not ever going to fix it you are not ever going to be able to fix it on your own 
man, like what you said is just so powerful. Like I don't even, I'm trying not to cry right now. <laughs> it's just so powerful right now. Like it's, it's amazing. Like I'm just, I guess I'm always just like surprised at like what God does, you know? Yeah. And I just, I don't know. I've just been able to meet so many people by doing this and who knows? You know what I mean? It's like, you just don't know who it's going to touch. And so you're hearing those powerful, that powerful testimony, it's just. Well, I commend you for giving people like me this platform because the thing about, <laughs> you know, the thing about people who are in the position that I was in and in a relationship with an alcoholic is they're not raising their hand. They are not raising their hand and saying, I need help because there's shame around it and there's guilt around it. My family didn't know how bad things were. Most of my friends, except, you know, the, the one that I confided in because I knew that she could relate to some of what I was going through. But there's so much shame around it and guilt around it. And women aren't, they aren't, you know, saying I need help with this because they don't want anybody to know, especially if you're a Christian. We're not supposed to have these problems, right? We're not, we're not supposed to go through these things. Like we're, you know, we're holier than thou and we're um we're chosen and we you know we don't have to go through the hearts that a lot of people think and, mm -hmm. they, and you know I, I remember feeling like it was going to be perceived as that um you know i didn't have a good hold on my life or that i didn't have a good relationship with god or that my husband was a bad person he's not a bad person he's a beautiful person he just was going through some hard things you know and so me worrying about people judging him and thinking that he was terrible you know there's just so many so many things that just want to make you keep hiding and just not asking for help and so there's so so many of us and i always say there is a wife of alcoholic in every audience there's at least one in your audience there's at least one in every single audience that i talk to or somebody that knows somebody who's in this situation so mm -hmm. you know if, if that's you or if that's somebody that you know it's okay to say that you need help, you know, find, find me, find Al-Anon, find, you celebrate recovery, you know, whatever speaks to you the most and raise your hand, get help for you, get help for your family, get help for your husband, because until you do, it's likely not just going to magically fix itself. You know, the, the spouse needs recovery, but we need recovery too. Like we are going through some super heavy stuff. It's trauma. At the end of the day, it's trauma in the household for the kids, for everybody involved. So. People like you who do podcasts like this are how we can talk to people and how we can find the people that need the help who are just hiding and not raising their hand for it. So thank you for doing what you do. You know, <laughs> I can't even, I guess you're welcome, but I mean, you know, um, I guess just like everybody else is like, you don't even know. Sometimes when you just step out on faith and just do something, you don't even know like what's going to happen, you know? And I'm just, every time I'm just, it just blows my mind that what happens you know <laughs> oh god but anyway um so i guess that's a good segue into you know um your organization so so what was it that inspired you to go ahead and uh, be that bridge in the gap the gap between you know uh women like you and um you know well obviously what you're going through is again it's a daily thing but then stepping out on that and saying hey i want to help other people that are going through this similar thing. So what, what was that like for you? So like I said, I wasn't a very willing participant at first. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. actually doing something else. I had a platform for women over 40 and you know, God had convicted me a little bit about, Hey, you need to tell your story around this. And like I said, it's not, it's not a pretty thing. You know, it's, it's not glamorous. It's not something that makes you like want to raise your hand and be like, yeah, I, you know, I, I want to share this with the entire world. My family went through hell, you know, but, uh, you know, he had told me you should probably, you know, you should probably say something about this because there's some people that need to hear it. And so I was like, okay, I will. And so, you know, I, I did like one pat podcast on it and, you know, put something on my, on my website and I was like, okay, there, I shared it. I'm done. I never talked about it again. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so I kept, you know, trying to move forward with the other thing that I was doing. And I actually entered a coaching program with some Christian business coaches. And um, as part of the entry into the program, you had to fill out a form about, you know, your platform and what you do and all of that. And so, you know, I wrote everything down as it could, as it uh, related to my midlife thing. You know, here's what I do. And I want to help women over 40, like find their purpose and all of these things. And this, these are my goals, long-term, short-term, all of that. Mm -hmm. Turned it into them. 
as part of writing a business plan for me, they went to my website and they saw my one little tab about the married to addiction thing, which I hadn't mentioned to them at all because I was not, that wasn't my thing, right? That wasn't, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> they came back to me and they said, there were three of them and they said, we are all 100% in agreement that you are not supposed to be doing the midlife thing. You are absolutely supposed to be helping wise about colleagues. They're like, we are sold out on that idea. It is what your calling is. It is what you need to do. Put this down and walk this way. <laughs> <laughs> and because they were so adamant about it, and because I already knew that the Lord had kind of been like trying to push me in that direction, I thought, you know what? I can either continue to pretend like I'm going to do something else mm -hmm. and, you know, stay out of my, what I know is now my true calling, or mm -hmm. I can be obedient no matter how scary it feels and heavy it feels and just, and I struggled with it for a while. I did when they gave me that business plan back, I was actually a little bit mad. I went to my husband and I was like, they want me to talk about this all the time. Like they want this to be my thing. He's like, well, then that should be your thing. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> So it was just like so blatantly obvious that the Lord was like, waiting on you again, yeah. waiting on you again, friend, whenever you're ready. So, and you know, like he says, it, when he brings us to it, he brings us through it. And he has given me, you know, so many open doors, connecting me to people like you and just, there's just favor on it, you know, there just is. And, and, and I can see the difference between what I'm doing now and what I was doing then. And it's just, it's my thing. It's my thing. <laughs> yes. Well, good. look, congratulations walking into your calling. You know, it's so funny. Um, I was having a conversation not long ago um, with a lady that she's telling me she has these radio shows and all these things, but at the same time, she's kind of going through, I guess, anxiety with speaking and whatnot. And I'm like, really? Because it seems like you're a talk show host, <laughs> you know? Um, and I know we kind of joked the whole time, like, uh, stop running, Jonah, stop running. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's what, he does. Like that. that's what he does. Yeah, we can get like that. We can, <laughs> we're trying to run from what it is we're supposed to be doing. So, mm -hmm. man, Absolutely. I'm glad you stepped on in there and went ahead and, you know, listen to the call and follow the call. Yeah, I've, yeah you know, it was an interesting kind of zigzag path, but I'm finally here. So, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> It looks amazing. It looks like it's going amazingly well. I did wonder too, as well, like, you know, how did you, your husband feel? Um, you know, I mean, obviously, since as if he supports, he's like, what is his um, feedback about everything? Like, how is he feeling about you uh, taking yeah. this path? Right. Well, when we very first, when I first, with my other platform, when I first said that I wanted to do a podcast and, you know, about it and kind of like pursue it, I did ask him because obviously this was his personal struggle too. Mm -hmm. And um, he's just kind of the same, he feels the same way that I feel about it. Like it's, we have a testimony now, you know, we yeah. have a success story. We have hope to offer. Mm -hmm. We, you know, it's selfish of us to not share that with people because when I was in the thick of this, I needed someone like me to tell me it was going to be okay. You know, I needed to find me. I needed to find somebody who had a Christian testimony and a restoration testimony and was still with their husband and had come through it and the husband's so sober and the family is healed, you know, I needed me. And, and he, he understands that too. And, and I have told him, he better watch out because God's about to call him next. <laughs> that was my act, girl. Listen, I was already going to ask like, so when y'all done got to just stay together then, right? Cause yeah, I told him just like a couple of days ago, I said, I really feel like in the future, it's going to be like a team. Like we're going to be a team, you know, cause I can go and speak yep. to my side of it and he can go and speak to his side of it. And He's he's coming around. He's coming around. You know. Stop, stop running, Jonah. Stop running. That's right. That's right. They'll find you. Tell them this girl that this, this random uh, little podcast host called named Miracle say Stop running. That's right. That's right. No, but he, you know, he he understands that now we we have a message to share, and he's mm -hmm. he's hundred percent on board with it. That's amazing. I'm so happy for you all. I really am. Yeah. So, uh, so I noticed there are several different types of programs and things that you offer. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, sure. So I have a couple of um, 
free things right now. I'm running a free workshop. It's a uh, five steps to breakthrough, I believe it's called. And that's if you just kind of want to get your feet wet with what I do, that'd be a great place to start. Uh, I also have my podcast, which obviously that's free information too. So if you just kind of want to uh, learn about me a little bit first, it's married to addiction.com. I'm married to addiction everywhere. So com is my website, um, Facebook, Instagram, all the things married to addiction. Um, but the other things that I'm offering right now is I have a course. It's a 30 day online course, which is kind of more of like a self paced thing. If you're, if you just kind of want something that you can do on your own, you know, it's completely private and online. So that is a good option for you. If that's kind of uh, what you're interested in, or I just announced a membership that I started called the secret sisters circle. And so that is going to be a little more hands-on, you know, we're going to, we're going to go through different topics as it relates to just the ins and outs of daily life of being married to an alcoholic. And it's going to be a little more hands-on where you get more support, more encouragement. You've got the community aspect and all that good stuff. So that's brand new. So I'm trying to kind of meet everybody where they're at, depending on the kind of help that they feel like they need right now, but there's free options, there's course option, there's a membership option. So I'm hoping that there's something for everybody. And if you need something different, I'm always all ears, you know, for suggestions, uh, feel free to contact me through my website. I'd love to get any and all ideas from my people who I'm here to serve. That sounds amazing, it really does. So like, how long have you been doing this thing? How it's long only been a been... few months. Yeah, it's only been a few months. Wow. So I, I have been doing something online for quite a while. Like I said, I was doing something before, something different. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as this particular platform, God's just shifted it um, completely in this direction. And it's just been a few months, so I'm really, kind of just getting the word out and trying to find all my secret sisters wherever they are. I know there's a bunch of them hiding all over everywhere. So he has tasked me with going and finding them and pulling them out of the darkness and showing them that he is there and there is hope. Yes, well, look, I, again, I commend you all. Um, I say congratulations on your new endeavor then. And um, I see great things. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I think that you again are standing in the gap for so many and like I said it's very important I say uh, especially all the time I feel like in this season in particularly the Christian voice is definitely needed so anybody that's out here like speaking on behalf of God and, and assisting God in that aspect um, by sharing not only your testimony about what he did for you all but then like you know showing people that they're not alone and all those things I just feel like that stuff is very very important right now so um Cause again, I mean, that was kind of like the thing that got me <laughs> going too. Cause when I was single in my single days, I was kind of looking for content to to keep me sane while I was thinking about these three things all the time as a single yeah. woman. Like, what am I supposed to do with these feelings, Lord? <laughs> so that was the thing that kind of got me out here to be like, you know what? I'm gonna have open and honest conversations with people at, about like all this stuff and what well, everything in between. I, and so that that was the same, I guess, for me as well. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just amazing what God does and how he does even. Again, it's like our testimonies are those things that take everything to the next level. And so, um, absolutely. And his timing know. is always really interesting. Um, somebody mentioned to me, and I hadn't really even thought about it, with the whole COVID thing, there has been more addiction in general. Mm -hmm. And then also people being together more often. So maybe the husband was having an issue, but the wife didn't really know how bad it was until she's working from home all of a sudden. And then she's like, mm -hmm. Oh, we've got a problem you know so I think that it really has impacted a lot more families over the last year because of everything that's been going on so for me to get this push basically right in the middle of that you know it's just the timing is just hilarious sometimes I feel you on that I really do I totally understand where you're coming, where you're coming from at the same time too uh, again this season what I'm seeing is it's definitely been like a, a time of renewal refreshing like you know, um, again, when I share my testimony all the time. I know people are probably tired of hearing it, but we just met, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to tell you about it. <laughs> but long story short, long story short, basically, um, I had been sitting on this idea for years, and but 2020 was that thing to be like, well, I'm just home now, so yeah. what else can I do? <laughs> and you know, the idea just came out about the podcast situation, something on husband suggested to me in 2019, and I just kind of brushed it off, like, ah! Because <laughs> I just said, I was like, oh, I'm gonna make the thing a blog. And he's like, why don't you make the podcast? And I'm like, yeah, I'm already, you, you always trying to add more work to me. Like, why, 
why you do this to me? Um, but then 2020 came around and then I, I literally didn't have anything else to do other than I have, I mean, I'm not like online wine business, but other than that, I'm like, I'm home. I mean, it's just me and my two year old son. And I'm just like, okay, <laughs> what am I going to do? And um, finally just stepped out on Facebook. was like, well, let me look into this podcast thing and found out that it's easier than I thought it was going to be. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, if I don't faith and do it, and since then it's just been such a blessing. Like I said, all the amazing people that I've met by doing it and um, well, doing, I guess, the talk show version, which is this. <laughs> and then, um, but even when I was just doing the podcast version too, and I don't know. So I just, I really just commend people to just step out on faith. You know, again, God's time is, is a part of it as well, because I worked towards these things, like a little bit by a little bit. Um, so I guess, I, it's like that balance between doing what you know you're supposed to be doing, and then also waiting on God to like open the doors and whatnot. So right. it's, and at some point, they're going to be like both at the same thing. And that's kind of like what happened exactly. with me. Yeah, and I, and I feel like he, I feel like he waits for you to take a step in faith, mm -hmm. and then there's another. Then the next path lights up. The next light on light on the path. For me, that's really hard because I'm like a control freak and a planner, and like I want to know, like show me the whole map, <laughs> where we we're going. You know, if I'm going on a trip in three years, I've got all my outfits planned already. You know, it's it's hard, it's hard, but I feel like he waits for us, though. You know, like he everything depends, it builds on itself. So every step that we take is going to end up being used in the greater scheme. We just don't know how yet. So it does feel scary and it does feel like a lot of fear of the unknown, but you just got to realize who your partner is. I mean, you can't go wrong, you know, just take a step mm -hmm. in faith. He's got you. And that, that's for things like this or anything, really. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, I mean, I could sit here and probably talk to you for a long, long time. So I won't be long your time, but I will say, um, again, thank you so, so much for sharing your testimony. I'm over here. See, see, I'm probably the wrong person to talk to because I'm over here thinking about all kind of ideas. Like, I'm over here like, oh, I see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so tell us, I mean, if you know a person, if you've got, you know, have your guys, tell my guys. <laughs> you know, I'm like, this good. No, don't let me, I ain't gonna get too much. I already gave too much already. I already gave too much. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, to the audience, but we can chit-chat about it. Right. But, um, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm over here like, my wheels are turning, like, this, this is amazing, and but at the same time, too, it's, it's all that, that again, that point, that finger pointed back to God, and I, I appreciate you all for doing that. Um, again, I commend you for sticking it out and not taking the easy way out, which is not all, not truly the easy way of divorce yeah. or whatnot, but people feel like it's the easy way, because it's like, oh, I'll just get rid of the problem, or whatever the case right. is, I'm sure. You know your husband i'm pretty sure is probably grateful to you for that as well to that you know that you stuck it out with him and you all i guess seemingly kind of walk together or anything i'm not trying to i'm don't want to assume yeah. <laughs> you know i don't know if y'all took a break or whatever case it does not fit but <laughs> um but yeah i, I really do I mean, well, i'm glad to see you know hear about the testimony and and everything like that and if there's anything that you really really want to kind of like i guess drive this thing home or you know that you really wanted to say by being on here what would that be the main thing that i want women who are in this position to know is it's not solely about your husband you need recovery too and i know that's really a hard thing to hear when you're in the throes of it because i remember being resentful when i heard that like i need to make changes i'm not the one with the problem here like he needs to make the changes you tell me how to make him change that's the information i think i need you know, and here I am walking around covered in hives all the time <laughs> because mm. I'm addicted to his addiction and obsessed with his addiction. And I am sick too, you know, and I need help too. And I need recovery too. Like my job was affected. My parenting was affected. Like everything in my life, my health was affected. And so it's not just a him problem. Like this, like I said, this is trauma. This is trauma for you. It's trauma for your family. Get some help. Get figure out how to better deal with this you know you don't just have to sit around and wait for him to get sober for things to get better there's things that you absolutely can do now to make it better for you and in turn make it better for your entire family including him as well so get some help 
you're not alone. There is support for you. You don't need to hide. You don't need to be embarrassed and have shame around it because it happens. It happens to normal families, Christian families. You know, there's we're we're everywhere. So just just get some help for yourself. That's the most important thing. Thank you so much, Miss Julie. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. It was an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for watching God, Sex, and Love. And thank you to Miss Julie Sanford for sharing your powerful testimony today. I hope that you all really enjoyed it. And I also hope that you all check out the website, MarriedToAddiction.com. If you are in need of this type of help, then please understand that there's someone there to help you. Thank you and good night.